Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing part number four of my bookcase tour. So, I have some books. You can actually just about see this shelf peeking out. It's that, that shelf there, look, where you've got one, two, three, and then number four. So, uh, this is probably the last time you'll be able to actually see the, the shelf in question as we're talking about it. Because my bookcases follow on all the way around there, into a room, through there, back around there. <laughs> so, um... But yeah, now today I'm going to start with, I guess I'll just jump right into it. So last time we were doing Charles Bukowski books and I'm just going to continue from there as we didn't finish looking at all my Bukowski. So let's get going I guess. So this here is The Flash of Lightning Behind the Mountain, new poems. I watch the old ladies in the supermarket, angry and alone. So these are part, this was first published in 2005, it's part of an archive of poetry he actually left behind to be published after his death as well. Then we have The Last Night of the Earth Poems, not too much to say about this really, this is another one of the Echo Press ones, talked about that in a bit in the last video which I will link to below. There's also a playlist of all of these uh, bookshelf tour books videos as well. So this one is probably actually looks like it might have been the last one to have been published while he was alive. So this was published in 1992 and I believe he died in 93. So um, yeah, and actually I do like his, his stuff that he wrote when he was an older man. Okay, then we have Charles Bukowski, The Night Torn Mad With Footsteps, New Poems and I, when was this one published? This one was published yeah, so these po it says here, these poems are written between 1970 and 1990, a part of an archive that Charles Bukowski left to be published after his death. So he did, like, there are quite a lot of these posthumous collections. Okay, then we have Charles Bukowski, the people look like flowers at last. And we have a quote here on the back, it says, uh, We all knew Bukowski was a tough guy, but who would have guessed that even the grave could not shut him up? The people look like flowers at last, shows him at his scruffy, hard-hitting, tender-hearted best. They say this is his final posthumous book, but don't bet on it. And that's a quote by Billy Collins. And do you know what? I don't think this was his final posthumous book. In fact, it definitely wasn't, because then they published like the On Cats and On Writing and stuff. So it's not the it's not his final posthumous book. Here we have The Pleasures of the Damned. This is poems 1951 to 1993. So this is a Canongate collection, which I usually don't enjoy as much as the uh, Echo ones. It's more of like, this is probably a good one if you want pretty much all of his poems in a single book. I mean, there are, obviously there are ones missing from this, but this is, as you can tell, is a pretty beasty collection. So if you just want to buy one book that has a lot of his stuff in, this is probably the one for you. Although I have also heard this one get a few bad reviews on BookTube, so. <laughs> okay, here we have. The Rooming House Madrigals, this is early selected poems, 1946 to 1966. And what's weird about this one is that he hasn't really found his style yet. In fact, it even, you know, it says 1946 to 1966. I did the maths based on when he claims to have started writing poetry, and that was 1956. My printer keeps just printing things by itself for no reason. I mean, this was interesting. This is probably one for the hardcore Bukowski fans who want to see where he came from. Because, uh, again, he's not really developed his style in this one. This is War All The Time, poems 1981 to 1984. So, again, these are towards the end of his life, really. About 10, ten years before the end of his life. So, he would have been in his 60s there. And, uh, yeah, another Echo Press one. Nothing more to say about it, really. Okay, then we have the one which has my favourite title. So that is Charles Bukowski. What matters most is how well you walk through the fire. Actually, I don't know if this is my favourite title, but it's one of my favourite titles. This one's published by Black Sparrow Press in Santa Rosa. And again, these are, yes, yeah, so these are poems that were left as part of an archive to be published after his death. Okay, then we have Women, so this is a novel, it uh, says on the back here, Low life writer and alcoholic Henry Chinaski was born to survive. Now at the age of 50, he is living the life of a rock star, running 300 hangovers a year in a sex life that would cripple Casanova. Women is a riotous and uncompromisingly vivid account of life on the edge. So again, this is part of his series of uh, novels that are, they're kind of semi-autobiographical. So if you're not a poetry fan, you can check out one of his novels. And we have here, You Get So Alone at Times that it just makes sense. This is another Echo collection. This was originally published by Black Sparrow and then got picked up by Echo. So there we have it. That's all the Charles Bukowski done. On to the next ones. We should have a nice little mixture really now. So you have Anthony Burgess, uh, Clockwork Orange. 
and you, you probably have already heard about this book. It's not a super long book, but it's just a, you know, a, a modern classic, I would say, really. All right, then from Anthony Burgess to Melvin Burgess, this is junk. Where was this set? This is set in the UK somewhere. I'm sure it's set in like Hull or just it's some I'm sure it was set in just like some crappy UK town. <laughs> the tagline here, that's all we need to know about this book. Junk equals heroin equals bliss equals despair equals a love affair you'll never forget. And yeah, I enjoyed it. I thought that was good. Okay. Then we have some books from an indie author, and that would, of course, be... These are the wrong way around. That would, of course, be Ali Burke. So this is Nowhere Train, which is volume one of the Enders books. And I believe it was like a zombie apocalypse story. And then we have Paper Souls, which is, I guess, more based on her, uh, the author's experiences uh, as a schizophrenic. We have here The Millionaire Mystique by Jude, Millia, by Jude Miller Burke, PhD. That is, this is just some generic, um, it's an uncorrected proof. As you can tell by the fact it has this like sticker on it here as well. It's an uncorrected proof by a company called Nicholas Breeley. So they used to send me a lot of these kind of books. They're basically like all non-fiction. It's basically examining today's female self-made millionaires and how they balance their life. And it's kind of also talking about how you can have kids and still have a career, I think, as well, you know. Then we have The Secret Garden by Francis Hodgson Burnett. So, reread this at school, basically, and I actually remember very little about it. So I picked this copy up when I saw it at, like, a charity shop or somewhere like that, because I didn't actually own a copy of it, and I was like, hey, I've read that, but I still don't remember it, so I do think I should reread this at some point. I just happened to glance in the viewfinder and just saw the, the face here giving me a really sad look. And the cat, I have buried the cat. This isn't even a pillow. How good is this? What you do is you put your hands inside it like this and it keeps your hands warm. Yeah. And her name is Jess. Here we have Graham McRae Burnett, His Bloody Project. So this was long listed for the Man Booker Prize 2016. I was actually sent a copy of this by the publisher and I really like this. I thought this was great. It's basically about a murder in Scotland in like the 1800s and basically not all is as it seems and so this is kind of it's almost like a dossier of different documents. So we have the account of Roderick McRae, a glossary, some medical reports, uh, bits about the trial, uh, the ending of it I actually really enjoyed as well. I would uh, I'd recommend this if you're into more sort of literary fiction-y sort of stuff. It's probably the highlight of this tour. This is Sharon Burnett and Nikki Hooks, A Question of Smeg, the second Red Dwarf quiz book. So you either know what Red Dwarf is or what it isn't really. It's a cool sci-fi show. Uh, well, it's a British, a British cool sci-fi show. They did make an American pilot as well, but it never got made. I'm going to ask a question here. So if you are a Red Dwarf fan, see if you can answer this one. Okay, so question 98, for example. According to Rimmer, What's the thing you have to remember about Captain Oates? I'm pretty sure that it's that Captain Oates was a prat. Yeah, he was a prat. Correct. That was from the episode White Hole. There we go. Okay, anyway, moving on. We have some William Burroughs now. So we'll start with Cities of the Red Knight. I honestly cannot remember what any of Burroughs' books are really about. As they're almost not about anything. They're just, just weird. Like, re reading William Burroughs is just like, I don't know taking acid or something like that maybe i don't know i've never taken acid okay here is naked lunch by william burroughs my incredibly battered copy i think i might have dropped this one in the bath this is burroughs's most famous book i mean i guess i'll read you the but in fact instead of reading you the blurb i'm just going to read you this description of it because this is more appropriate Provocative, influential, morbidly fascinating, naked lunch is an apocalyptic ride through the darker recesses of the human psyche that's like most of Burroughs' work. Okay, then we have William Burroughs' Nova Express, which I actually really like this this kind of format of it. This is like one of the old little, like all my Isaac Asimov books like this as well. <laughs> Port of Saints. Port of Saints is the story of a man whose alternate selves take him on a fantastic journey through space, time and sexuality. The last work written in London before Burroughs returned to the United States in 1973, Port of Saints is an experimental autobiography, a profound exploration of the concept of personality, and a nightmare voyage through revolting alien sexual fantasy to the depths of the psyche. In short, an ultimate foray into that rich, savage landscape first depicted in Naked Lunch and the Wild Boys. Then we have Queer... Uh, 
Queer is a strikingly candid and powerful work which takes the reader back into the homosexual underworld of the 40s and into the very core of Burroughs' unique sensibility. We have The Adding Machine, which I believe these are essays. Uh, yeah, they are selected essays. So basically William Burroughs was the grandson of the guy who invented the Burroughs Adding Machine. So that's why this is called The Adding Machine, because one of the things he writes about is The Adding Machine. And we have The Last Words of Dutch Schultz. So this is actually a screenplay, I believe. And it's based on the, the gangster Dutch Schultz who was shot. And basically the police took a transcription of his last, like of his dying ramblings while he was in hospital. And he did eventually die. And uh, Burroughs basically took the transcript of his like fevered hallucinations and turned it into a screenplay. We have The Ticket That Exploded. This says, this is a prophetic vision of a world in which technology has gone haywire. Continuing the adventures of Agent Lee in his mission to investigate and subvert the methods of mind control being used by the Mova Bob. Mo Nova Mob. So this is part of Burroughs' cut-up trilogy, so he kind of revolutionised the cut-up method of writing and also of art, so when you take bits, cut them up, rearrange them and come up with something new. And then we have The Western Lands, and this is the final one of the books that I've got of Burroughs at the moment. I am kind of reading my way through his bibliography. I think part of the problem here is that I've read random books rather than reading trilogies, so most of the time it's hard enough to understand what the hell's going on to begin with, and, I don't know, reading it like that makes it even harder. But hey-ho. Then we have Tragedoodles by Ben Cameron. 101 drawings that will break your heart. So, for example, this. Hello, little one. I am your elder. You will respect me. Then we have Trespass by Mikey Campling. I actually reviewed this one recently for Tarden Danes. Indie read-along. So I'll link to that below. This is, well, it's billed as a tale of supernatural suspense, but it's actually basically YA fantasy. It's an indie book. Yeah, I, honestly, I wouldn't recommend that, I'm afraid. Although I do think that Mikey Campling is a very nice chap. Then we have Carol Kapek, Roar and War with the Newts. So basically, Kapek was, was he Polish, I think? And basically, Roar is a play. Uh, Roar is short for Rossum's Universal Robots. And it's actually what introduced the word robot to our vocabulary. And then War with the Newts is um, just, you know, a cracking sci-fi novella, I would say. It is really. Maybe a novel at a push. But, um, yeah, really enjoyed this. Really enjoyed this. I want to read some more KPEC. And if you're into sci-fi, you just you have to read him. Like, he's like the godfather of the genre almost. Okay, then we have Truman Capote, A Breakfast at Tiffany's. actually really enjoyed this. I enjoyed the book much more than the film for some reason. And by the way, the name Holly Golightly may slightly have influenced the name Miley O'Hara in my in, <laughs> in, in my Driven books. Because, well, O'Hara is after Scarlet O'Hara, so. This is Carillon Magazine. This is issue 39 of summer 2014. Sometimes I buy random literary magazines, usually especially if I am in them, so. Yeah, I'm in this. Do you want me to read you the poems that I have in this? This is actually the poems from in this from before I started working on my own poetry collection. So I'd actually forgotten about these poems. Alright, these are old poems from 2014, I guess, but I'll read them. Why not? So this is Nuit Flanor. There is nothing like walking down Oxford Street at four o'clock in the morning, sober in a three-piece suit. As the diggers keep on digging, the workers keep on working, and the diggers keep on digging, and the tubes aren't running, and the buses aren't running, and I'm not running from anyone, except the drunks who sleep in doorways, knowing I'm amongst their number tonight. But the people seem so normal, and I, the ghost who walks among them, and I wonder will I fade away into obscurity, or stand on faded plinths above this great city that I have loved like a sister. Not my best work, I don't think, but anyway. This is M.R. Carey, The Girl With All The Gifts, and this is a zombie novel, basically. I guess that's actually a big spoiler, because it's not set up as a zombie novel. I did really enjoy this, though. I thought it was well written and well thought out. So I kind of want to, um... I want to read the next one. I think the next one is called The Boy on the Bridge or something. But I actually interview, interviewed Mike Carey, who wrote it as well. And, uh, yeah, just, I would just enjoy it. It was a good book. This is Eric Carle, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. This is the anniversary edition. This is the anniversary edition to celebrate 30 years of the book. But I believe this year is uh, 50 years, the 50 year anniversary. So this is Bringing Nothing to the Party, the True Confessions of a New Media Whore by Paul Carr. And basically Paul Carr 
is kind of what well, it says here. He was a journalist covering the first dot com boom. I actually know him through some stuff he's done with TechCrunch and things like that. But I didn't put two and two together and realize it was the same person until I was about halfway through the book. And I was like, wait a minute, I know this guy or I know of this guy. And this isn't for everyone, but if you're into tech and the tech scene, this is a pretty good book just to sort of see what's what it was what it was like back in the day, really. Then we have Lewis Carroll, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. It's just a Penguin popular classics version. Actually, having seen Hooked on Books on BookTube and her collection of Alice in Wonderland books, I do want to get myself a really nice edition of it at some point. But in the meantime, this will do. We also, of course, have the Dover Thrift Editions version of Jabberwocky and other poems. By the way, I know Jabberwocky off by heart. Let's just, I will just show you that now. You know, why not? This is me covering my face so I can't, well, actually that won't work because it will cover my mouth as well. But this is me making sure I'm not just reading it from a page. Twas brillig and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wabe. All mimsy were the borogroves and the mown raths outgrabe. Beware the Jabberwock, my son, the jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the Jubjub bird and shun, the frumious bandersnatch. He took his vorpal sword in hand, long time his manxome foe he sought. And rested he on the tum-tum tree, and stood a while in thought. And as in uffish thought he stood, the Jabberwock with eyes aflame, came whiffling through the tulgy wood, and burbled as he came. One, two, one, two, and through and through, the vorpal blade went snicker-snack. He left it dead, and with its head he went galumphing back. And hast thou slain the Jabberwock? Oh, come to my arms, my beamish boy. Oh, frabjous day, kalukale, he chortled in his joy. Okay, well, the battery died, and now I have no idea what the, like, angle of the frame was like. But whatever, we'll crack on. This is Lewis Carroll, Through the Looking Glass. Again, Penguin Popular Classics Edition. Then we have... <laughs> this has got a great title, to be fair. This is Paul Carter. Don't tell mum I work on the rigs. She thinks I'm a piano player in a whorehouse. And it's just a non-fiction book about this chap who had a very, well, he's still alive, you know, but uh, he had a very odd life, really. Actually, this is from Nicholas Breeley Publishing as well, but I picked this up from a charity shop because, uh, I don't know, I'd seen it around and I, I thought the title sounded interesting. And it was, it was, it was interesting enough. I mean, I don't know if I'd recommend it above all of these other amazing books that I've been talking about, but, you know. So we have Johnny Cash. Cash, the autobiography of Johnny Cash with Patrick Carr. I finally got that right. This is, I guess, a big inspiration of Walk the Line, the movie as well. It's just Johnny Cash's autobiography, and uh, I mean, if you like Johnny Cash, just read it. It's it's worth reading if you like Johnny Cash. And he had, he had some odd things happen as well, like when he got robbed and stuff. Crazy. All right, this is the first third, and uh, it's by Neil Cassidy. And basically, this is the book written by Neil Cassidy, who is uh, Sal Parody, no, no, sorry, he's Dean Moriarty in On the Road. So it's Jack Kerouac's kind of best friend slash hero and part of the beat scene. And it's interesting enough, it's worth a read if you know who Neil Cassidy is and want to know more about what he was like as a person. Then we have Juggling for the Complete Klutz by John Cassidy and BC Rimbo. And uh, if you've seen my YouTube channel trailer, you'll know that I can juggle. In fact, I'm going to go get some juggling balls. It's been a bloody while, so I might not be able to. I, I literally, I don't know where my juggling balls are. I don't know where they've gone. I used to have them knocking around. So I found these weird sort of crystal things. Let's give this a go. See if I learned anything from that book. Oh, shit. Let me try and remember the magic. I'm determined to get this right. Someone just walked past the window. I just look like a nutter. So that's how successful that book is. Okay, then we have a Breathing Into Marble, Laura Sintija Sonia Skite. This is a contemporary Lithuanian classic. In fact, I didn't even remember that I'd read this, uh, but yeah, I have, I, and I enjoyed this as well, but it's only recently that it kind of it makes me think because of the whole Latvian literature thing as well. So, but anyway, yeah, this is pretty good. It's uh, it won the 2009 EU Prize for Literature, and uh, it says here when Isabel decides to adopt the troubled young orphan Ilya, she has no idea of the trauma that is about to be unleashed. Taking him back to their cottage in the country, his dark presence unsettles the family and resurrects the unsettling ghost of Isabel's past. Breathing into marble is a dark and poetic story of love, family, deception, and death. And my final item for this tour is this here, Street Fighter Hyper Looting 
by these people at the bottom. Moylan, Chamba, Huang, Steinbach, Vo, and Genzerman. And this was awful. <laughs> this is a special edition of, like, the Street Crooks Fighter comic or whatever that's been specifically written for Loot Crate. So all of the Loot Crate staff are characters in it, and the Street Fighter characters are at Loot Crate's office. And it's just... It's just one of the most depressing, like, things I've ever seen. <laughs> so in the next one, we have Ray Charles, maybe a bit of Cassandra Clare, but almost overly, overwhelmingly, the entire shelf is pretty much just Agatha Christie. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, leave a comment to let me know which of these books was your favourite. Hit subscribe if you're new here, and I'll see you soon in another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.